Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Data, Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning the 10th of March 2014, ending Friday the 14th. Hope you're having a great trading week. Charts as usual, brought to you by eSignal 11. We're going to start out by looking at the daily charts of the major indices, some of the big stocks, then we'll look at what happened this last week in terms of intra-week action. We'll discuss what we're going to be seeing next week in terms of data and get a roadmap and a plan. Uh, for the week ahead. So here's the S&P 500. Completed a new nine bar setup. What's interesting about this, it completes that setup and, and does it on the same day that would have been uh, another count towards the uh, existing. So we've got a recycle, a seeker recycle right there. That's why the parentheses are there. And at the same time, bar one of a new seeker count. That's what happens when you see that one. There's actually an R underneath that one because the recycle occurred today as did a new count. Uh, so that's really interesting. We didn't get to a 13. Uh, on the seeker, and uh, so just the, maybe the nine bar alone will be uh, a reason to roll over, but uh, in terms of any big seeker exhaustion, we're not there yet. Here's a look at the NDX, which did roll over a little bit more this uh, this Friday, and uh, it has a seeker in place, but only at uh, bar three of that count, the red three that you see there. Here's the uh, SOX, the semiconductor index, uh, making new highs. Uh, just keeps going. Market just keeps going. Don't fight the market. Just be aware of the direction every day, but certainly uh, we're not here to try to get loaded up on the short side as the market continues to make new highs, which seems like almost every couple of weeks, even if it gets a couple of days of a rollover. Here's the uh, the biotechs. Here's one, though. As go banks and biotechs, so go the market. Biotechs a little more negative than anything else, actually uh, at the low of the last three weeks or so. Let's look at some of our key trading stocks that we like to follow. Here's a look at the uh, Apple chart. Didn't do a whole lot this week. Been pretty flat. Matter of fact, Apple's been sitting at this 530 range pretty much since last October. A little bit of trading above and a little bit of trading below, but not much else for Apple. Uh, meanwhile, Google, not the same story, obviously. Back in October, it was at 900. Uh, almost made a new high again this week at uh, 1225. So big move up for Google. Here's a look at the Tesla chart. A little rollover. Uh, big Monday after it gapped down uh, this last week. Still sitting near highs. Amazon's got a cup and maybe a handle going to form. Although this would have probably, this would have just completed if I go to projection mode and you'll hear a sound here. Nine bars up for a startup phase on uh, Amazon. Um, let's take a look at Netflix. Still hanging near the highs. Not the most exciting week you've ever seen. Tesla. I already did Tesla. Sorry, I apologize. Here's a look at Twitter. Uh, looking like uh, maybe this thing's going to roll over a bit here, even if it had a nine bar startup phase recently. And here's a look at Facebook. Uh, back up near highs. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the intra-week action. Let's start out actually on the S&P E-mini futures. And as you can see here, uh, pretty flat week. So this is uh, Friday's data, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday. So we came out of last week at 1860 on the ES. We gapped down Monday, pretty flat. Uh, that was on the uh, situation in Ukraine, obviously. Tuesday, that didn't look like it was going to be as bad as you might have thought. Gapped up and uh, drift a little higher and then just dead flat Wednesday. I mean, the volume was in the market. We traded 2 billion shares, but this is one of the flattest days you're going to recall. Five points of range on the ES. Unbelievable. Thursday, little gap up straight sideways. I will point out on the 10-minute chart, we got our Comer 13 sell signal right here. The risk line from it's this pink line, and that's the high for the rest of the week. It tries to violate it on the open on Friday. Fails right at the risk line and comes back in and ended up closing right where it's been. So this gap here from uh, Wednesday to Thursday is filled. The gap down here, uh, Tuesday, Monday to Tuesday, is not filled back at 1844. And uh, 1841 or so is the static trend line of this current move. So that could, be a, that could be a downside target. Market's still open, which is why you're hearing my alerts. But overall, man, this is intraday action this week, some of the poorest I've seen. Uh, with everything going on in the world and a lot of data and the situation in the Ukraine, these are some extremely flat days, and I feel very fortunate to have pulled some of the stocks picks we did out because they certainly weren't getting any help from the futures or the broad market. It was like everybody was just completely dazed and confused. Here's a look at the NDX. Monday looks similar, gap down. By the way, we closed uh, within about four points here of where we did uh, last week. And on the ES, the S&P, we closed, uh, it closed up about uh, 14 points, I guess. But back to the NQs, the NASDAQ side. Uh, you know, same similar Monday, gap down, push lower, came back a little bit. Tuesday we gap up, but then everything else looks about the same. Tuesday, very slight drift up after the gap and then flat. Wednesday flat, Thursday, a little gap up and flat. Friday, um, gapped up, sold off, and that was it. 
Uh, so the gap remains from Tuesday going into Wednesday, and this is just a really, really, really uh, poor action in the markets. Now I'll take a look at uh, oil real quick. Also, here's the daily chart with everything going on in Russia. Uh, obviously, uh, we had some action Tuesday. Price started to go up. Wednesday came back. Thursday gap down. I'm sorry. Monday get went up. Tuesday came back. Wednesday gap down. Thursday and Friday rebound a little bit. Net for the week on oil, dead flat right back where it started. But got to keep one eye on that, obviously. I think the, I think the world seems confused as to what's going on in uh, the Ukraine. I think that would be the way to characterize this. What do we have this week for economic data? Not much, but we have some stuff coming the following week. So let's let's get doubly prepared for this. Um, so we've got uh, Monday no data. That's the tenth. Tuesday we've got wholesale inventories and uh, Jolt's job openings. Wednesday MBA mortgage index and crude oil inventories, Treasury budget. Thursday, initial and continuing jobless claims, that's the weekly number, with retail sales and import-export prices, business inventories, and natty gas. Uh, Friday, PPI, and then Michigan sentiment. So there's a lot of data. None of it's huge. Um, we do not yet have options expiration, but to make matters worse, this is uh, going to be a triple expiration. So a week from next Friday, uh, which will be the 21st, is going to be triple expiration. That means we have a decent chance of a big move a week from Wednesday on the 19th. That would be the potential options unraveling. But this coming week, Thursday and Friday, is when we roll the options contracts. So we're going to roll from the March to the June contracts, Thursday going into Friday. And as you know, that oftentimes will slow down the market because you have to reset all the technicals and the big players don't play. Uh, so that's not going to be helpful later on in the week. Uh, if we have anything to do, I would say it's going to have to be uh, Wednesday's got the most data. Uh, and again, the world's going to be watching the Ukrainian situation. Um, but hopefully we can have, man, those those days this week were some pretty flat days. And again, like I said, very feeling very fortunate that we found some of the picks we did that seemed to move even when the market wasn't. And uh, hard to believe the market's not moving at all. I mean, the futures were just a mess and almost impossible. Uh, hard to believe the market's not moving despite the fact that we continue to trade 2 billion shares a day worth of uh, volume on the NASDAQ. And uh, let me show you that real quick. You know, remember, this was the problem all last year is that we had almost no days over 2 billion shares. And look at this. This entire week was over 2 billion by the close. So the volume is still good. Um, we're just not seeing movement to go with it, and that is uh, fairly unusual. I'm going to throw in a 10-day moving average real quick, and then we'll wrap this up just so you can see how much better volume on average is this year so far. Since January, you, you wipe out this last uh, that last week of the year, which the volume was poor. Get that out of the average and look where we are. We're sitting up here. We've been above 2 billion shares for a while on the average. Never broke 2 billion shares at all last year. Look at a lot of the periods down there near 1.7 billion on the average. So uh, good volume, not translating into great movement in the market, but we are finding individual stocks, and that's what's important. Obviously, we should find even more to play with if the market moves. As usual, we'll be there to help you out in the trading lab with futures and stocks. Hope you have a great trading week. We'll talk to you soon.